like to work for an example involving mirrors, involving the images formed by curved mirrors. So in this particular problem, we're told that um, a dentist magnifies a tooth with a mirror. We're told the object distance, that is the distance from the tooth to the mirror, that's 1.25 centimeters. Uh, we're told the image distance, that is that the uh, distance, the image is behind the mirror, that's uh, 10.5 centimeters. And given that information, we're asked to figure out the focal length of the mirror. Um, that's the key characteristic of the mirror. And we're also asked to figure out the magnification that's accomplished of the tooth. Uh, that's obviously what the um, dentist is interested in, is magnifying the tooth. Before I go on and do the calculation, let me just make a point about um, this, this question. Um, it says the dentist uses a mirror to magnify a tooth. That the dentist is magnifying the tooth tells us actually something about the mirror. So a plain mirror, a flat mirror, doesn't magnify. Also, actually, a convex diverging mirror doesn't magnify. It's only a concave converging mirror that can actually magnify. And it actually only magnifies under certain conditions uh, of where the object is located. So. Although we're not directly told that the mirror is a um, concave mirror, is a converging mirror, uh, because it's magnifying, we do know that it is a concave mirror or a converging mirror. Another couple of points. So we're told that the um, object distance is 1.25 centimeters in front of the mirror. If the object is in front of the mirror, then things that are in front of the mirror have a um, positive distance from the mirror. We're told that the image is 10.5 centimeters behind the mirror. Things that are located behind the mirror, this image is located behind the mirror, have a negative distance from the, the mirror to the image. And so it's important that when we go ahead with the calculation uh, of the focal length of the magnification, not only do we know that the object distance is 1.25 centimeters, we know it's plus 1.25 centimeters. Not only do we know that the image distance is 10.5 centimeters, it's minus 10.5 centimeters. So given all those observations, let's go ahead with the calculation. There's two parts here. One is the focal length. And to compute the focal length, we're going to use the mirror equation. And the mirror equation relates the object distance, the image distance, and the focal length. It's this equation here, where P is the object distance, Q is the image distance, F is the focal length. Now, in this particular case, we know the object distance and we know the image distance. So I can just plug them into this equation. Uh, plus 1.25 centimeters to stress that the object is in front of the lens mirror. Uh, one over minus 10.5 centimeters. It's important that the image is behind the lens. And if I take the inverses of these two numbers and uh, compute the sum, I get it's it's plus 0.71. This will be inverse centimeters. This is the inverse of the focal length. The focal length, then, all I've got to do is um, take the inverse of this, 1 over 0.71 inverse centimeters is a focal length that is 1.4 centimeters plus 1.4 centimeters that is positive 1.4 centimeters again makes sense a converging lens a concave lens that can magnify as a positive focal length
Part two. Part two asks, what is the magnification? Magnification is also easy with the magnification equation. It's just the negative ratio of the image and object distances. And we know the image and object distances. I've just got to uh, plug them in. Uh, the minus sign is important. And also the minus sign of the image distance is important. So it's minus 10.5 centimeters. I've got to divide that by 1.25 centimeters. And if I carry out that calculation, this is just going to be a number because the centimeters in the numerator and denominator cancel out. I got a number that is positive 8.4. Uh, so the image is eight more than eight times bigger, which is what the dentist wanted to accomplish. And it's um, upright. It's the same way up as the tooth itself. We can draw this image formation to check, to confirm a calculation. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line. Uh, that's the optical axis. And I'm going to draw the mirror situated on the optical axis, the optical axis going through the uh, center of the mirror. Uh, this is going to be a concave, a converging mirror. Uh, the object is going to be over here on the left-hand side. The image will be over here on the back on the, on the right-hand side. I'm going to add to my picture, as I try and sketch the image formation, I'm going to add the focal length so the focal length for our converging lens is um, 1.4 centimeters. So let's imagine that this is the focal length or the focal point, 1.4 centimeters from the from the uh, front face of the converging converging lens. Uh, I'll also indicate the center of curvature, which is twice the focal length. Well, the focal length is half the center of curvature. So I'll mark that over here, also on the left-hand side. And then now we're going to draw several rays and figure out the image formation. To do that, I'm going to place the object at the object location. The object uh, in the problem was located at 1.25 centimeters, somewhere like this, just inside the focal length from the face of the mirror. So one ray that I will draw is a ray that travels from the, from the object to the mirror, as if it's heading away from the radius of curvature. And then it will head back along the same path towards the direction of the radius of curvature. So that ray is going to look something like this. Here it is heading away, and then here it is heading back through the radius of curvature. It struck the mirror at zero degrees to the normal. Uh, the incident angle is zero degrees. The reflected angle is zero degrees. And so it returns along the path that it arrived on. So that's, that's one ray that we can draw, a fairly straightforward, fairly easy ray to draw. Another ray that we can draw is the one that heads towards the, the mirror parallel to the optical axis. It's this green ray here. And then it will um, reflect from the mirror. And when it reflects from the mirror, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pass through the focal length. So that's, that's this ray here. So here's the outgoing ray. And then finally, a, a, a third ray I can draw is one that uh, is kind of a cousin to the green ray here, which went in parallel and came out through the focal point. I can draw a, uh, a, an additional ray. I'm going to draw it in magenta. It, can, it appears to come from the focal point, maybe something like this. And then it uh, reflects off the mirror and heads out parallel to the optical axis. So over here on the far right of the diagram, I'm imagining my giant eye. And I'm receiving the light, 
that's reflected off the mirror. So I'm receiving this magenta, this, this blue, this green ray. And I'm thinking, I'm reconstructing where those, the common point that those light rays come from. So let's try and do that. I'm going to extrapolate this light ray back. This is the easiest one to extrapolate back. because It's just parallel to the optical axis. I'm going to extrapolate the blue light ray back. It's going to extrapolate back and it's going to cross the magenta light ray somewhere around here. And then if we look, the other light ray also crosses around this point too. And so this, where these three rays converge, is my image position. And so we indeed have verified, I, I mean, qualitatively, not quantitatively. I, I didn't use a steel ruler and I wasn't really careful in making this drawing. But qualitatively, we've reconstructed the image. We found that it is firstly magnified a lot. The calculation said eight times. We found that it is upright. The calculation said that it is upright. The magnification was positive. And we've also found that it's uh, much further behind the mirror than the object was in front of the mirror. We were told that in the problem. It's 1.25 centimeters was the object distance. 10.5 centimeters was the image distance. Anyway, that's an example. That's an illustration of um, working with images formed by mirrors, in this case, a curved mirror, in this case, a concave mirror. We worked with the um, mirror equation, the magnification for the calculation of the uh, characteristics of the, uh, in this case, we could work with it for the characteristics of the image. In this case, we actually knew one of the characteristics, the image distance, so we could figure out the characteristics of the lens. Uh, and then we did a sketch, we made a sketch, we made a drawing of the image formation using the sort of classic rays that we sketch when we do uh, ray tracing for lenses and mirrors.